welcome back. So sometime last week I put a question up on our Instagram stories asking if you guys would like to see a blog post or a YouTube video of a whole bunch of skincare that I had to review. The overwhelming response was you would prefer a video, so thank you very much because writing the blog post would have taken me hours. <laughs> it's much quicker and easier for me to film videos. So here I am. I've got a bunch of stuff. Some of it I've bought myself. Some of it has been sent to us as samples to test. Some of it I've tested more than others. I'll explain that as I go. Some things you know immediately work for you, some don't. Some I would like to have tried for longer, but I don't necessarily have time. And I'm going to start with cleansers. The first one I have to show you is from Lamel. This is the Lamel Clarity Active Cleanse. I bought this myself. I've been looking to switch up my morning cleanse routine a little bit and introduce something a little bit stronger and more active. Essentially, I've been using the Aven Gentle Milk Cleanser for many moons now, at least a couple of years, and I do really love it, but I've been wanting to get something that works a little bit harder for my skin because as I'm getting older, I just find products with more active ingredients just show me more results. I am also having a lot of dermapen and professional peels at the moment, and I was wanting to complement the results of those treatments with, like I said, something a little bit more active. So, okay, so the two key ingredients with this cleanser are tea tree and salicylic acid. Tea tree is a wonderful, natural, antibacterial ingredient. It's very, very good for oily and acne prone skin because it keeps the surface of the skin incredibly clean. Salicylic acid is, I've talked about many times, one of my favorite acids and it goes into the pores and kind of sucks all the all the old dead skin cells out like a hoover, leaving your pores really really clean and again helping to combat any kind of breakouts or clogged pores. It's also soap free this formula which I obviously really like. It takes the form of quite a thick gel and it leaves your skin feeling very clean but not stripped at all. And it smells very strongly of tea tree but there are no artificial fragrances in the formula either. So what I've been doing is I've been alternating that with my, my milk cleanser in the morning and I feel like it's just a really good way to augment my topical salicylic acid that I'll be using. I've been using the one from The Ordinary, I think I mentioned that in a recent video as well. And I haven't had any flare-ups or reactions to it. It seems to be very gentle. I really like the formula, so highly recommend that one. And then another morning cleanser that I bought recently and have been trialing was inspired by Camilla's latest empties video, which you will have seen last week. And this is the La Roche-Posay Tellerian Dermo Cleanser. Now, I expected this to be quite similar to the Aven Gentle Milk Cleanser, but it isn't really. I mean, it is in the sense that it's a very, very gentle uh, white lotion cream cleanser, essentially, but the textures are quite different. So the Aven is, it's not a milk exactly, it's kind of a very thin lotion, whereas the La Roche-Posay Cleanser is a lot thicker in texture and it feels a little bit more emollient. So the key ingredients in the Dermo Cleanser are glycerin, which you can really feel in the texture, and then of course the La Roche-Posay Thermal Spring Water, which contains a natural antioxidant called selenium. So the thing with these French thermal water brands like La Roche-Posay and Aven and Vichy, it is the composition of the thermal water that makes it special. It's incredibly soothing. It's one of those ingredients that's been proven to really calm down angry skin, atopic skin, eczema, psoriasis, all of those very aggravating skin conditions and by their very nature just are very very soothing on the skin and obviously they force you to have sensitive skin. I don't have sensitive skin but there's no reason that you can't use sensitive skin products when you have normal skin. It just means that they are that little bit more gentle. I'm not entirely sure how I feel about this one. It's very pleasant to use because of that high glycerin content. It feels really lovely to massage onto the face. My problem with it is is that I don't feel that it rinses off cleanly so I almost feel like unless I use a face cloth to remove it after I wash my face I get a little bit of a layer left behind Now, whether that's the glycerin I'm not sure but the, my problem with that is that I think it's probably going to interfere with the absorption of my serums and my moisturizers but I can also understand why people with dry skin really like that feeling so I don't know that I would necessarily repurchase it over the event but I do think it's probably a lot more suitable for dry skin so if you do have dry skin maybe check it out Okay, two more cleansers, and these were sent to us. The first is the Glamblow Galactic Cleanse. So this is a jelly to milk cleansing balm. That's not a texture I've ever used before. Very interesting. It is like a, well, it's a gel, essentially, and then you, you work it onto dry skin. It can be used to remove makeup or just as a regular cleanser, and then you rinse it off and it uh, emulsifies into a milk, and it does rinse away very, very cleanly and easily. You don't need a, a cloth to remove it. I have tried to remove makeup with it. It's perfectly fine for face makeup but I struggled a little bit with my eyes and for that reason I wouldn't use it as a first cleanse just because I want something that can do everything easily and for me that's the body shop cleansing oil. It smells really really good. Kind of. 
I want to say vanilla cupcake scent. So the key ingredients with this one are precious meteorite mineral powder, moonflower oil, bamboo charcoal, and and Landlo's silver tip white tea teoxy. I think it's like a it's like a patented antioxidant that they have in their products. It's formulated without parabens, phthalates, and sulfates. So again, it doesn't have any soap to dry your skin out, so it doesn't leave your skin feeling dry at all. So on the upside, I like the texture. It definitely works as a cleanser. It's perfectly pleasant to use. My main concern is I'm not a huge fan of the marketing. That meteorite powder thing, I can't find any reason why that would need to be in a cleanser. The, the sparkle in the cleanser is actually mica. It's not the meteorite powder. It's not like ground up meteorites are sparkly. Uh, and again, it's another unnecessary ingredient. It is also potentially aggravating for sensitive skin because it does have this very, very fine grit. It's not so much an exfoliating feeling as just when you're kind of rubbing it off. It's almost like you can feel these tiny little grains in the product and I just think that would really irritate sensitive skin. And I also think it's really expensive. So it's 590 Rand and we're talking about 145 mils. So it's a decent size. So for example, the La Roche-Posay one, that's 200 mils for 250 Rand. So I do think it's very expensive and I'm not a huge fan of the ingredients, so I'm not sure that I could really recommend it to be honest. Also from Glam Glow is this, this is the Glam Glow Super Cleanse. This is meant to be a cream to foam cleanser, so this is better for oily skins because it contains charcoal, so it's obviously very purifying on the skin. The key ingredients here are three charcoals, so bamboo, ubami, wood and coconut charcoal, kale and clay, that same antioxidant and then uh, there is some lactic and glycolic acid, although they are very very far down the ingredients list so I'm not sure that they are there in sufficient quantities to be genuinely uh, beneficial or exfoliating. So the one thing I really struggle with that's really odd is I can't get it to foam. So it says squeeze a generous amount into hands, add water and vigorously rub hands together to create the foaming lather. I have tried this five or six times and I absolutely cannot get it to lather up. Now I don't mind that, I don't like face washes that lather up anyway, but I don't know why I can't get it to work, it's just a little bit odd. Anyway, so it kind of goes on more like kind of a clay mask um, and then again rinses really clean um, and is very easy to remove. That one is the same size and is 490 Rand, so 100 Rand cheaper than the other one, which is also kind of odd because I've noticed on international websites they are the same price, I don't know why they're different prices in this country. I also do think this one would be a little bit potentially irritating for sensitive skin, it's got eucalyptus oil and peppermint oil in it, which would be very aggravating on sensitive skin, so don't recommend it for, for that. And again, a little bit on the pricey side here, um, personally if I was going to be buying a clay cleanser, I would get the one from Ren. I believe the Ren is called Clary Mat. I'm a much bigger fan of the ingredients list on the Ren one. The brand is all about clean skincare, so by their nature they're just going to be, I think, a little bit better for the skin. Okay, next up is a moisturizer. This was also sent to us. This is from Kiehl's. This is the Ultra Facial Moisturizer. By now you probably know that I'm a huge fan of the Ultra Facial Cream. It's the closest thing for me to the First Aid Beauty Ultra Repair Cream that I wear every single day. It's a fantastic moisturizer. Really, really good for oily skin, especially but it does suit all skin types. It just sinks into nothing and is really hydrating. So this version isn't as light. It's got squalene in it, so it's a little bit more emollient again. It also contains extra glycerin. And for me, it just sits a little bit on top of my skin. It's fine as a night cream, but I was looking for something that would be an alternative to, to a day cream. So it's not something that I'm probably going to repurchase. What I have been doing is I've been using it on my chest. The skin on my chest is very sensitive. I can't just put body lotion on there. So what I have been doing is I've been using my first aid BT cream on my, on my face and then moisturizing my neck and my chest with the ultra facial moisturizer. In general I love the Kiehl's moisturizers I think that they are amazing obviously the body moisturizer is also sensational creme de corps for life but they're also very generous with their samples so if you're interested in trying something from the range pop into the store and get for example the ultra facial moisturizer and a sample of the ultra facial cream try them and see which texture works best for you okay and then i was watching a caroline hirons video the other day she did a kind of brand breakdown of the brand eucerin and she was talking about one of their moisturizers which was apparently very very good for dehydrated skin this is the eucerin aquaporin active I, like any good Caroline Hirons fan, rushed out and bought it immediately. This is the SPF 25 version. It's, it's a very sort of typical looking white cream moisturizer, but I'm afraid it definitely didn't work for me. 
This sits on my face even more than the Kiehl's one. It feels really heavy to me and it's not even the version for dry skin. This is the all skin types version. There are some products that when I put them on, it almost feels like my skin can't breathe. It starts feeling very kind of clogged on my top lip, which is really odd, but that's like an instant giveaway to me that the product is a little bit too heavy for my skin. It doesn't sink in completely. And I think that it might be the SPF in it. It's a bit like that feeling of having a sort of thick SPF on your face that doesn't melt in completely. So yeah, that was a bit of a bust. And not that cheap either. It's 225 Rand. For interest sake, the key ingredients are a nature identical glucoglycerol supports the skin's own moisture distribution channels. They transport moisture between the skin cells and help maintain skin's hydration balance. If I remember correctly, that's the same kind of idea behind the Neutrogena Hydro Boost range, um, but that's a very, very different texture, that, that moisturizer. Um, it also contains hyaluronic acid and obviously the UVA and UVB protection. It's fragrance-free, paraben-free, and non-comedogenic. I would say if you are remotely on the dry side, that would probably be very nice. It certainly is a lovely texture and I, I'm sure that it does work well for dehydration, but I just personally can't stand the feeling of it on my face. Okay, next up, two new products from Dermalogica. These are designed to work together as a duo. They are the Dermalogica Calm Water Gel and the Barrier Defense Booster. Now, Dermalogica is a tricky one. I do find their products incredibly expensive. The Calm Water Gel is 890 Rand. The Barrier Defense Booster is 1,220. So just straight off the bat, the prices rile me up a little. But let me talk you through them. So the Calm Water Gel is quite an interesting product. It's essentially a very lightweight gel, like this. You rub it in and it literally turns into almost like a water. And it completely sinks into the skin. It's glorious to use, I'm not gonna lie. I've really enjoyed it. I've been very surprised by how I can get away with wearing this on its own over my hydrating serums, not having to put a, another moisturizer on top. It is genuinely very hydrating. It's a lovely texture. I really like how lightweight it is. Obviously divine for summer. But I do have two fundamental problems with it. The one is it has a lot of silicone in it. You can feel it. Dimethicone is in the ingredients list along with a couple of other silicones. And I just personally don't understand why silicone needs to be in skincare. It really irritates me. It's one of my pet hates. Some of my favorite products contain it, unfortunately. It's not that I won't put it on my face, I just can't understand why it's there and I wish that brands would work harder to find. It's got absolutely no value for your skin. It's essentially putting a layer of plastic on your face. There's just nothing good about it, except for texture. I'm just, I'm really not a fan. The other thing that kind of mystifies me is it contains lavender essential oil which smells delicious, but it's from the Ultra Calming range, which is designed for very sensitized skin. So I don't really understand why that fragrance is in there. They could just as easily have made it fragrance free, which I think would make it more suitable. So those are two real bugbears about it for me. Having said that, like I said, it really does work and I really have enjoyed using it. So if you aren't sensitive and you're a Dermalogica fan, definitely give it a try. The Barrier Defense Booster is basically a, a blend of oils and it is designed to nourish the skin relieve dryness and reinforce barrier integrity against future irritation. You use a few drops either on its own over the face or you mix it into your moisturizer. I really like that the oil is very very light so it really sinks into my skin and, and my skin doesn't usually absorb oil very well and it also does blend really really nicely. I've been popping it into my uh, Dr. Jot Serum Midden at night and it mixes really well with that product and I do feel like it, it absolutely does what it says on the tin and I'm sorry to hop on about this but I have to come back to the price. 1200 Rand is a huge amount of money for a product like this that isn't an essential part of a skincare routine. You could easily invest in something like the Lamel Sera Cream, for example, that I use to manage my barrier when things get a little bit dehydrated around here. And that works really, really well and is, is less than half the price. One thing I will say is uh, when I was doing the research for this video, I came across an article that Caroline Hirons had written, Caroline again, about these products. And she was talking about how to use them together. Now, I assumed it was calm water gel first and then followed by the barrier defense booster but apparently it's the other way around you put the booster on first and then you go over with the cream now i don't entirely understand that because in my mind the larger molecule should always go on top so the oil molecule would go on top of the much thinner moisturizer 
So I haven't tasted it that way, but I will do. And if it results in any skin miracles, I'll let you know. Uh, I'm certainly interested to see what doing it that way around does to my skin. I will keep you posted. Next up is another product from Lamel. This is a serum. This is the Lamel Correctives Intensive Growth Factor Serum. I've written a blog post about the most important anti-aging ingredients in skincare, which I will link below. And you can go and read up a little bit more about growth factors. But essentially, they're important in tissue regeneration. So stimulating the growth of new collagen, making your skin firmer and more elastic, which is obviously something that we lose as we get older, and generally battling all of those sneaky signs of aging. It is targeted at mature skin with sun damage. Now I'm not sure that I'm necessarily in the mature category just yet but I sure as hell have sun damage so it'll be very interesting to see how a product like this tackles that. I've only been using it for a few weeks so I can't give you a full review on it but I thought it was very interesting because I've never seen a growth factor serum before and I think particularly interesting that it's come from a local South African company. So the key ingredients with this one are copper peptides which promote collagen and elastin production and also act as an antioxidant growth factors which help to promote skin tissue repair and regeneration as well as stimulate the formation of collagen and something called thyroidoxin which I understand is an antioxidant. It also contains Lamal's hyaluronic acid which is the same molecule you'll find in the Correctives HA Plus serum which I absolutely love. So it's obviously also hydrating and it's supposed to leave your skin feeling much more soft and supple and like I said firmed. So I use that every night underneath my night moisturizer, which like I've said is the is the Dr. Jart Ceramidin. I only have one comment so far, and that's that I find when I put the serum on my skin before I layer on my night cream, it stings my eyes a little bit. It's a little bit like there's some kind of volatile ingredient that evaporates on contact with the skin, and it's almost like the fumes, strong word, it's not that bad, but it's that idea, the fumes kind of making my eyes burn a little bit. It completely disappears as soon as I put my moisturizer on top, so I don't really understand why that's happening. Um, I will ask the people at the mill. It's not particularly unpleasant, but it also doesn't seem like it should be doing that, so I'll check up on that for you. But if you, if you have used this product and you've had the same reaction, please let me know, because I'd be very interested to hear. Okay, next up are some sun creams. The first two I have to show you are from Vichy, one of my favorite brands, another one of those French thermal water brands. This is the UV Protect SPF 50. This is the anti-shine cream. I've been using that sun cream now for about a month every day, whether I'm wearing makeup or not. It works beautifully under makeup. It's a very hydrating formula, and although it is called an anti-shine cream, I don't particularly find it mattifying. In fact, I find it makes the skin look quite juicy almost like it almost feels like it's giving it a boost of hydration so i have another vichy sunscreen that i use quite a lot which is in an orange tube i can't remember exactly what it's called but that dries down to a completely matte borderline drying finish so if you have slightly drier skin i would suggest this product instead it really is good it's such a lovely light texture it's got a lovely scent and like i said layers beautifully under makeup it's so nice that there are now so many options for girls especially with oilier skin for spf that they can layer under their makeup every day because it used to be that that was an incredibly difficult thing to find especially at a reasonable price I do still use my Body Shop SPF and they are roughly the same price. This is 230 Rand for 40 mils. It does contain an antioxidant in the formula as well, but I also layer antioxidants under my sun care because I find that it's incredibly effective at preventing tanning and sun damage. So if you are on the market for a really good new everyday sunscreen, definitely check that out. Another product they've launched in that range is the UV Protect SPF 50 Invisible Mist. This is amazing. I haven't tried it personally, but I had a friend here yesterday who was on her way for a walk and she was she had makeup on from earlier in the day and she mentioned that she didn't have SPF on and I said, oh, I've got this amazing new product from Vichy, why don't you try it? Because essentially it's designed to layer on top of makeup or just as a top up throughout the day, but it doesn't interfere with whatever you're wearing on your face. So in her case, it was a bit of makeup. She literally sprayed two even layers on her face it was totally invisible like the name suggests. She didn't need to rub it in. The mist is really, really fine. She said it was an absolute pleasure to use. It's also non-greasy. It's not like you spray it on and suddenly you're shiny. Like I said, it's totally invisible. It's amazing. And I think that whole idea of topping up your sunscreen is obviously such a valid one, but who's gonna layer a cream on top of their makeup half of the day? No one. So it's really nice to see a product that really can be layered over makeup without disturbing it or making it look like a shiny mess. 
Okay, one more sunscreen. This is from Exuvians. This is the Sheer Daily Protector Sunscreen Broad Spectrum SPA 50 PA++++++ Four pluses. This is one of those mineral sunscreens that you need to shake up before you use it. It's a very, very thin texture and it comes out with a skin tint which is meant to even out your skin tone. I personally don't think there's enough of a tint to, for it to do that at all. So just pretend that's not even part of the formula. Because it's so thin and it's a mineral sunscreen, it does dry down completely matte, which is really, really nice. Again, it layers beautifully under makeup. It never pulls. My main criticism is that as a mineral formula, it does leave that ashy cast on the skin. So I personally wouldn't wear it on its own if I was not wearing makeup on top. But when you put makeup on top, you can't see it. The key ingredients are titanium dioxide and zinc oxide, that's the, the mineral sunscreen element, together with a polyhydroxy bionic complex of gluconolactone and lactobionic to help prevent collagen breakdown and skin aging. It's also fragrance-free, oil-free, paraben-free, non-acnogenic, non-comedogenic, not tested on animals, and not water resistant. So on second thoughts, maybe don't wear it to the beach. Last up, I've got some body moisturizers, and these are from Vino, which is an American brand that's been around for years and years, and it's just launched in South Africa. By the way, if you can hear jackhammering noises, I am sorry, but I promise it's worse for me than it is for you. Uh, this is the Aveeno Daily Moisturizing Lotion, and I also have the Aveeno Daily Moisturizing Body Yogurt. I've already worked my way through one of their more nourishing formulas. It looks like this, but it's in the blue bottle. I can't remember the name exactly, but I'll put it on the screen. The Aveeno range uses colloidal oatmeal, which is a very nourishing ingredient for skin, and it's particularly good for anyone with dry skin. I don't suffer from particularly dry skin, but I do like body lotion that I can feel at the end of the day. So this version is completely fragrance-free. It sinks in really easily. It's a really, really good everyday body lotion. The body yogurt is scented, more kind of vanilla oatmeal. It's really delicious. I've nearly smashed through this whole thing already. And while the daily moisturizing lotion is the texture of kind of a gel meets a cream, this is very much a, a light kind of wobbly cream, if that makes sense. It obviously contains the same colloidal oatmeal as the other products and also Greek yogurt, which again is another one of those amazingly nourishing natural ingredients. The scent doesn't linger a long time, so while it's very pleasant, it also doesn't hang around, so it doesn't interfere with your perfume that day and you can't smell it hours later, but it smells really nice when you're putting it on. I will be a lifelong devotee of the Body Shop Body Butters because like I said, I like something a little bit richer and more emollient, but they are very difficult to travel with and I think the dry skin version of this lotion that I took overseas with me in December, we were skiing, did an amazing job of keeping my, my skin really soft and supple and avoiding any of that kind of crocodile skin. And I think for traveling in future, I would probably buy that again, just because it's so much easier to travel with. So that is all the skincare that I have for you today. All of the products and links for where to buy them locally will be listed in the blog post that goes with this video. The link to that post will be down below in the description box. All of the prices and sizes of all the products will also be there. If you have any questions, please leave a comment. And thank you very much for watching. I'll see you soon. Bye. Never gonna find me. I'm a renegade. Uh -huh.